Okay, now on to hypothesis testing and t-tests. We're going to revisit our problem from the lecture of our good-for-nothing drug-taking doping snails. Import the data called snails. You should know how without help by now, but I have to do it anyway, so you can follow me if you don't. And to make sure we locate the proper file, snails, we're going to import the snails data. And if we take a look, we know it has headers, we know it is separated by a comma. We import this successfully. Here we go. And I would recommend you do this on a clean sheet. So first thing we're going to do is calculate the variances of both data sets. So here we're looking at samples. Variance 1 and variance 2. And using this knowledge, we're going to use, again, the data analysis feature of Excel. We scroll down to t-tests, and we're going to use this knowledge to select the correct t-test. So we know, in this case, we don't have a paired two sample for means. And we have two other options, which might be of use. We have our t-test with two sample, assuming equal variances, and two sample, assuming unequal variances. So in this instance, we're going to pick the one with equal variances because we quite clearly have the same variance. Okay, so we're going to double click on this. We're going to make sure our input ranges are correct. So a variable one range, variable, variable two range. And we're going to make sure our alpha is set at 0 0.05. So this is our 5% confidence level. You can reduce this if you want to, and that will change the statistics um, that the tool generates. We're going to make sure our range is output to a suitable location, for example, G1, and click OK. As with regression, this outputs a various array of data sets, including the mean, the variance, the number of observations, and other important measures. But the important things we're going to look at here are the t-stat, which I'm going to highlight in yellow. This is our t-statistic. And here we have our various tests for our one-tailed and our two-tailed tests. We have our critical value. This is our critical value at the 0.05 constant level for a one-tailed test. And this is our critical value at the 0.05 level for our two-tailed test. And here we have our exact probability values. OK, so we've calculated these values, and you know where they're located, but we've neglected to write our hypotheses. So, answer the following questions. What would be our null hypothesis? What would be our alternative research hypothesis? Which test should we use, a one-tail or a two-tailed test? Justify your answer. Using the values in the table, list the t-statistic, comment on whether we can reject h0 at p equals 0 0.05, and give the exact probability value in terms of percentage, describing what this means. OK, so that's our first example of uh, applying a t-test. So let's import some new data. Let's down and download and import the river underscore data. So again, find the correct folder, and here it is, river data. And we're going to import this. And again, we've got headers, and we look like we're separated by commas. Finish. Again, best to select the top left, and OK. And we have imported this correctly. This data is taken from the National River Flow Archive. And the station name is the Sheaf at Highfield Road in Sheffield. I have downloaded two sets of data for flow rates in January 2014 and flow rates in January 2015 for the same flow meter. We want to know whether flow rates were significantly different. Answer the following questions and where required perform analysis. What would be our null hypothesis?
What would be our alternative research hypothesis? What type of t-test should we perform, assuming a normal distribution for now? Explain your answer. Note down the important t-statistic, p-value and critical values. Which have you used? A one-tailed test or a two-tailed? Justify. Can we reject the null hypothesis? OK, so we've performed a nice set of analysis here on real-world examples, and you should have got some nice data here. However, we haven't plotted the data. It's always good to plot data to help with our interpretation. So let's select the raw data in columns and insert a 2D line chart. So, we can select our raw data, thus, using our control shift and down, we're going to insert our line chart, and here we go, we have our flow rates for the different times of year. We can alter the data legend by clicking on the chart and clicking on select data. So if we select data here, and we can alter the legend to more appropriately represent what we've got. So for example, let's delete this and put January 2014. And here, let's change this to January 2015. So what I've done here is I've clicked on each individual series and clicked the edit button to edit those values. And I've changed the series name here. Click OK when this is done. Don't click cancel because that will undo all of your changes. And again, make sure to add your axis titles. So this is flow rate in meters cubed per second, I believe. And this is, of course, day. And this gives us a really nice illustration of the trends of this data set over time. And of course you can add a chart title and move this to a separate page if you want to. OK, this ends the guided part of the practical. In the next section, method choice, you are going to choose appropriate methods to answer certain questions I pose. So you should now be able to perform these techniques with little further help but do ask if you do get stuck. We're going to perform this analysis on data called volcanic gas, which is uh, data on volcanic gas fluxes from two different craters, which I've labeled the northeast crater and the southeast crater. And in these instances, I want to know how, we, how the data for each crater is distributed. And I want to know how, what the best measure of central tendency is. And there are a series of questions on the practical document to lead you through this. For the second data set, I have created a spreadsheet for you, so I've already imported the data because of the large number of data points. And you should be able to use some of the shortcuts and hints and tips I've given you to deal with these larger number of data points very, very quickly. So in this instance, the spreadsheet contains matching records for gas fluxes of carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide from the same crater. Thank you for listening, and thank you for attending these practicals. I hope they have been useful. Any questions, please ask.